Hi, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com, welcoming you to my tutorial on image views and border panes. I'm out here at my home page, and if I go into my tutorials, um, I can either go to CL Tutorials or to Images and Border Panes in JavaFX and JavaFXML. If I go to CL Tutorials, because it's my most recent one as of this recording, it shows up at the top, but you can also look at it, find it going through the drop down menus here. So, what am I going to teach you today? Well, here's a live view of the finished product, and basically all I'm doing here is I'm using these buttons to just display different images here, depending on which button I click, and I can also use the clear button. So this is new for uh, my tutorial series, working with images, and it's probably something a lot of people want to learn how to do. Um, another new feature of this particular program is I'm also using this thing called a border pane. Here's a up-close shot of a border pane. If I just go into the tutorial here itself, and it says, what is a border pane? Well, here's what a border pane looks like. And you can see it's a layout in JavaFX with five different zones or territories. You've got top, bottom, center, right, and left. If you've ever done any work with Swing before, this is very similar to the border panels where you have north, south, east, and west. But they've renamed them to be less geographic, I guess, in nature. And so now they're just top, bottom, uh, right, center, and left. And I'm only using, in my actual application here, um, the top, center, and bottom. So if you take a look at a screenshot here of what I just showed you earlier. So I'm going to use the top zone for these buttons, the middle for the picture, and the bottom for clear. Okay, even though you've got five zones, you don't have to use all five of them, just use the ones that you need to. And obviously the center zone, as you can see here, it's kind of the star of the entire application. So whatever the main feature is, is probably going to go into the center area. And then you can use any of the others in combination that you need to. Now you don't have to just put one thing in each zone. As you can see in my sample screenshot here again, I'm putting three buttons up here. Um, and that's basically just using an H box to contain all three of them. And then the H box itself is added to the top zone. The center has the image. And then just a single button into the clear area down here in the bottom. All right, so there's a lot of work to be done. So let's get started. This is how I start every new demonstration. I'm going to create two new projects, the FX application and the FXML, both to do the same thing. For the FX application, I'm going to give it some kind of a name, ending with FX, so I can keep it separate from the FXML. Once I'm done that, I'm going to create the other version in FXML, giving it the same name with FXML at the end of it. This will help me sort things out later when I go to work on both projects at the same time because in the end they're both going to do the same thing. So now that I'm done, the FX version, I'm going to erase all of the code except for the last four or five lines. I am going to need a stack pane or some kind of a pane as well as a scene and a stage. So I'm going to clean everything else out there as well as the comments at the very top of the code. Moving on to the FXML, the first thing I do is I go to Scene Builder and I delete the label and the button. Just click on both of those and just delete with the delete key. And I'm going to design my own interface later. I'll save it for now. And the last place I go is the controller for the FXML document. I'm going to delete the label here as well that I deleted from the form, as well as the code and handle button action so I can write my own code later. Lastly, I'm going to remove the comments at the top and I'm ready to start my demonstration. So we're looking here at uh, some skeleton code in the JavaFX version of the application. And I've closed up my import statements here just because we don't need to type these out. As you know, um, when things get introduced to the program, it's going to ask you to import these automatically. So you don't need to type these out. Um, I've already got them pre-imported, if you will, to avoid having to keep coming up here and fixing this. But just so you know that these will eventually become part of your program. And just as uh, JavaFX asks you to import things, just go ahead and do it. Make sure that you're always grabbing the JavaFX version of things um, as they come up. All right, so I'll just close that back up here, and we'll start looking at the actual program itself. So I'm going to come down here into the very top of my program. This is where I typically declare the objects I'm going to use in the program. So I'm going to start with four buttons uh, for the three uh, pictures I'm going to see, as well as the clear button. I'm going to need an image view. So an image view is a JavaFX object that can contain an image. So it doesn't, it's not the image itself, but it points to the image and it's basically a frame that you can put the image in as you'll see later on. Okay, I also need an H box to uh, contain the top three buttons that are gonna go into the top part of the panel. 
All right, so that's all I need to declare. Coming down into the Start section here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my four buttons. So we've done this on many tutorials before, pretty straightforward. You just create each new button, passing in what you want the caption of the button to be. Right after I declare the buttons, I always like to right away hook them up to the Handle Button Action. So you can see down here I've got Private Void, Handle Button Action, Action Event, Event. So that's basically the method that the buttons are going to run when they get clicked on. So in order to connect these four buttons to this method down here, I basically have to put this code in here for all four of them. So I've got each button, dot set on action, and then this is called the lambda way of connecting uh, buttons to um, methods. It's a very handy way to uh, force each button to come down here to look for its code when it gets clicked on. All right, so that's all we need to do with the buttons. Let's move on to the next thing. So um, before we go any further, I lied, we actually have to do a couple more things with the buttons. Um, we're going to create a H-box for the top three buttons, Empire, Liberty, and BTN Central. Okay, so I've called this BTN box, and it's basically a container to contain all three of them. Um, to space things out, I'm going to have the uh, H-box uh, set spacing to 10, and set padding, which is the outside spacing, to 20. Okay, and, and I do another tutorial on H boxes and V boxes. Um, if you haven't worked through those before, you can always look up the other tutorial I have on YouTube on, on that subject. All right, so next, um, we're going to create the image view. And you can see here, it's really easy to make the image view. It's just new image view. You don't pass anything in when you construct it. You just type it in exactly as you see it here. All right, from there, we're finally ready. Now that we've got all of our objects created, we can create our border pane. All right, now when you create a new JavaFX program, um, it does give you another type of pane, a stack pane. So all I've done is just changed it to a border pane. I'm still calling it root because that's what it was called with the uh, template, but I'm just giving it a different type of uh, identity. So it's a border pane now instead of a stack pane. I'm going to set the padding to 10. That's just going to spread things out a little bit uh, between the, the different zones that we're working with. Um, so here's how we, it's really easy. Here's how we add to each of the zones in the uh, in the border pane that we're working with. Okay, so I can just say root.setTop, uh, the horizontal H-box. So that's the three buttons going into the top zone. Into the center zone, I'm going to put my image, and in the bottom, I'm going to put the clear button. Okay, so um, that's basically how we commit things to the different zones of the border pane. Pretty straightforward, right? Now with this last button here, um, I do have to do a little bit more tweaking. I want to say, hey, button clear, you're in the bottom all by yourself, and I want to set you into the middle. So um, I had to write this extra little bit of code here, border pane dot set alignment, and then this is addressing the button clear and putting it into the middle. All right, so that's going to force that bottom button to go into the center of the, of the uh, bottom uh, pane, I guess, or the bottom area of the, of the border pane, okay, where we say set bottom here. Okay, so after that, um, the rest of the code is pretty straightforward. It's what comes with the uh, template when you start a new JavaFX uh, application. Um, I did tweak it a little bit, though. So the scene equals new scene. I'm still passing in root, obviously. I've given it a bit of a different size here, just based on the needs of the application. And I've set the title to be uh, something a bit more meaningful for, for what this application does. All right, so this area is going to, like all of this code here, is going to basically construct the uh, the view, um, but now we have to write the code for handle button actions so that these buttons can do something when they get clicked on. All right, so let me start off with this little bit of code here. Okay, so I'm going to declare an image, first of all. I'm just going to call it IMG, and I'm going to say, okay, if, if the event that was clicked on was BTN Empire, or another word of saying it is, is if the source of the event was BTN Empire, then I'm going to point my image to a new image, and I'm going to point to a file in the source folder, in the images folder, called mstate.jpg. Okay, so I just want to show you over here on this side here. Inside of my project, I've created an images folder, and inside of the images folder is where I've placed my images. By default, when you try to load an image up, um, it goes looking in the source folder for, actually, one root up from the source folder, rather, um, for the uh, file that you're trying to get. So we got to basically point it uh, to where the file is located. So I have to say, okay, program, look in the source folder, and when you get there, find another folder called images, and then when you get into there, 
look for the uh, picture that you're looking for. Okay, so that's the way I got it to find the uh, image based on uh, using source as the first part of the path. All right, and then you can see down here, like once I've created the image, um, to put this into the uh, image view, uh, which is called IMG pick, I just use the set image command and I pass image in. Okay, now there's a bit of an error here because I haven't quite finished the code yet, but this is basically how you put an image into an image view. You just go dot set image and there it is. Okay, so the rest of the code is basically finishing off the if statement for the other three buttons. So I'm going to say, you know, else if um, I clicked on BTN Liberty, I'm just going to a different image this time, statlib instead of emp state. Else if uh, BTN Central, then I'm going to load the Central Park image. Um, else I would have cleared I would have hit the clear button okay remember I got four buttons up here I've got Empire Central Liberty and clear so if it ain't any of these other buttons then it must be the clear button so in that case I'm setting image to null and then when you ask the IMG pick set image to uh, something that's null you're basically erasing the image and that's how that clear button works to clear the image out all right now these three images are available on my website so if you go back here as well as the source code by the way so um, if you don't feel like typing all of that out, all of the source code here is available, except, of course, for the imports. They come in naturally when you add this stuff in. But you can copy and paste this right into your uh, project, and it should work for you just fine, except if you don't have the images. So down here, if you want to actually use my images, uh, you can just right-click and save any of these, and, um, and then you can have those. Or you can use your own images if you want to. All right, so that's how we do the Java FX version of this application. Next I'm going to look at the FXML way to get this same thing done. So we're looking now at the FXML version of this program and there's really not as much code to put in the FXML version. All you have to do to begin with is declare all of the objects that you're going to need to be pointing to when you go to Scene Builder, the ones that you're going to be referring to when you get down to the handle button action later on in your code. Okay, so I'll start with the first one here, and that's simply BTN Empire. And the only difference between this and the other version is you've got to put this at FXML on top. You see, without this here, Scene Builder won't be able to find this when you go to try to connect this to the button that you've drawn in Scene Builder. Okay, so you do have to declare each of these on their own separate line, but uh, other than that, as long as you put at FXML on top of each of them, you'll be able to locate them later in Scene Builder. So I'm just going to sort of paste the other ones in here right now. Okay, so there they all are. So I've got the, um, the four buttons as well as IMG pick. Um, what I don't need to declare here is that uh, HBox. I am going to use an HBox in Scene Builder, but there's nowhere in my code that I need to refer to that HBox. So it's not really something that's going to be talked to in my program. So it doesn't need to be declared here as an FXML object. So I can leave that out. Um, the other thing you got to make sure is that the method that's going to run handle button action um, I've called it the exact same thing here that it is in the FX version, uh, just to make life easier. But the one difference is it also needs the FXML on top of it so that Scene Builder can find it later on. Okay, so once you've declared all the objects that you're going to be using in your code, the only other thing left to do is to write the code for the buttons. No code needs to be, needs to be written at all for uh, describing the layout of this because Scene Builder is going to take care of all that for us. So it's really a lot easier to do this in Scene Builder. So the code, as it would turn out, is identical to what it is in the FX version. So I'm just going to paste it in right here. Okay, and, and you can do the same. You can just copy and paste it from the other project. Make sure, again, of course, that you've got an images folder in your FXML um, um, project uh, root, and you've put the images inside of there. That way it can find it. It basically locates it the same way it does in the FX version, um, and, and the logic is identical. The code is identical, so we don't really need to explain it again. All right, but once you've got all of this done, you're ready to now go into Scene Builder by double-clicking on the FXML uh, file here, and that will load Scene Builder, and then you can draw out the application. So we're going to take a look at that next. So now that we're in Scene Builder, the first thing I'm going to do is take my anchor pane and give it a different size. So you can see here in the layout area of my anchor pane, I can set it to 450 by 250, and that just opens up when you uh, hit the triangle there. So next we're going to take a border pane, we're going to drop it out on top of the anchor pane, and then we're going to uh, stretch it to fit the parent. So that's going to stretch the anchor pane out, or the border pane to fit the anchor pane. All right, so now we're ready to start putting things in our border pane. We'll start with the uh, H-box, and you can see when I drag it in here, see how it shows you the different zones? Really handy. And we're just going to drop it into the top zone, because that's where we need it to be. 
And so now I can start putting my buttons inside of that H box. So I'm just going to drop them in one at a time. Okay, so one beside each other. Because this is an H box, it's going to let me just put them in side by side like that. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of work next to resize this H box. Maybe make it a little bit uh, narrower on top like that. We're also going to spread things out a bit. So if I click on the H box itself and I go down to the layouts here, okay, the padding is going to control the outside border of the button. So you can see if I just set that, it sort of pushes things away from the edge. And then the spacing controls the space between each button. So you can see how it spaces things out. I'm also going to go to the properties and set the alignment to center. That's going to put all of the buttons in the middle on the top. So that looks a lot better uh, in the middle like that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the bottom. And it's funny because when you put this into the, the bottom zone, there's no setting that needs to be set to put it in the middle. It just goes there automatically, which is kind of cool. All right, but now I, I do got to set the padding for the overall border pane to push that button off the bottom a bit. So you can see here under the layout properties, a nice padding of 10 will push everything sort of away from the walls a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, so now we're going to put the image view into the middle. Now the center is the biggest part of the uh, border pane, so that's where it's going to go because it's going to take up the most amount of room. All right, so now that we've got all of our components in place, we can set some more properties. So I'm going to set the text property for each button, and that's just a matter of opening up the properties panel and just typing out what you want each button to say. So I'm just going to quickly come up here, and I'm going to type in Empire State Building, and then the next one I'll put in uh, Central Park. And uh, then the third one, I'll put Statue of Liberty. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, you should go to New York sometime if you've never seen it before. It's really quite a beautiful city. Uh, I dedicate this to New York, this program. Um, and the bottom is the clear button. Sorry, that was just my little plug for New York, so I had a little bit of downtime there. Um, okay, and then the image itself also needs to be uh, set. Uh, we'll do that after, though. Uh, let's start first by hooking up each of these buttons to um, the FXID and handle button action. So notice when I hit the drop down here, these are all the at FXML variables that I declared and the handle button action method too with at FXML. So that at FXML is helping us locate these things now. So I'm just going to each one of these, pointing each one of these to its matching declaration from the program. And then um, the image itself also needs to have its FXID assigned as well. All right, so that's basically it. And uh, because the code's already written, um, this program will now work out of the box. So that's how we do um, border panes and images in JavaFX and JavaFXML. Uh, this is John thanking you for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you back for more JavaFX tutorials in the future. Bye for now.